Hello everybody. Today our topic is dynamic spectrum sharing. It is one of the hottest topic around 5G these days because of the massive amount of uh, reduction in TCO that is total cost of ownership it can bring to operators when they are launching 5G in the initial phase in the NSA domain that is non-standalone configuration. Today we will see at the motivation of uh, dynamic spectrum sharing the design principles behind it, the 3GPP specifications, the actual technology options, and in the last look at how the vendors are going along in deploying this technology, in testing this technology, and who are the market leaders in this. So now let's begin with the motivation of the technology, and in the rest of the video, we will find out all the details. And do uh, watch till the end, because we will be sharing some very important details about dynamic spectrum sharing that can help you understand 5G and the way it might be deployed in the initial phase. So let's begin with the motivation of the technology for dynamic spectrum sharing. As we all know, 5G has two main frequency distribution, that is your FSR1 and FSR2. So majority of the deployments uh, which come under sub 606 gigahertz are hovering around 3 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz and the other part is your millimeter wave function that is beyond 6 gigahertz when we consider the deployment in between the 3 to 4 gigahertz domain or even in the millimeter wave domain the coverage pattern for 5g will be very limited so basically your cell radius will be very small considering the high propagation loss of the very high frequency. Secondly, the operators have a lot of spectrum which they are already using for LTE. For example, in Australia, Optus, Telstra, Vodafone, they have a lot of spectrum in L23, in L26, in L18, in L7 for LTE. So if that spectrum can be used in conjunction for their 5G deployments, that will give them an advantage in terms of spectrum usage and also they will be able to uh, basically deploy 5G in the lower bands improving the coverage and also uh, considering uh, the non-standalone uh, deployment phase they can deploy uh, 5G very quickly along using their LT low bands for example in L7, in L18, in, in L20, L21 and etc. So that is the motivation behind uh, dynamic spectrum sharing. One can also consider static uh, spectrum sharing, but as the tests have been conducted, in terms of static uh, spectrum sharing, for example, if we have an LTE carrier of 20 megahertz, we divide 10 megahertz to NR 5G, and we divide 10 megahertz to LT. The problem is that in terms of static uh, spectrum sharing, the throughput efficiency goes down. So, for example, we do not have enough 5G users, then the spectrum efficiency will go down and we will have uh, capacity issues. So, the question is, what is dynamic spectrum sharing? So, basically, the idea is that if we have one radio, one carrier, for example, we have a carrier of 20 megahertz for LT already operational in our operator, we use that carrier on our uh, basically on our, on our radio and we use dynamic spectrum sharing in our scheduling. So basically, if we have a legacy UR UEs, for example, LTE UEs, and we have 5G NR UEs in our cell, both of them, the LTE UEs will get the LTE resources from the uh, E node B and the 5G NR resources will, you, will get the 5G resources or 5G NR capabilities from the same E node B and basically from the same radio in the same carrier. So you do not need to deploy 5G in a different, uh, you can say frequency or a different carrier. You can use your same LTE carrier and dynamically schedule your LTE and your 5G users using the same radio carrier. This is uh, very important in terms of deploying 5G because you can then basically deploy 5G in lower and mid bands and that will improve the 5G coverage. 
secondly as it is dynamic so your capacity uh, will be optimized you won't be uh, compromising on poor performance for your LTE users and you will also take the maximum benefit out of your 5G NR capabilities uh, in terms of dynamic scheduling for this dynamic spectrum sharing. So one radio, one carrier, but it can give you LTE and 5G at the same time and dynamically allocating 5G and LTE resources. So now what are the design principles? Dynamic spectrum sharing is a very new technology in terms of 3GPP specifications. It was actually included in release 15, uh, which came back in 2018-19. But the implementation and the recent trials have been conducted all in the latter part of 2019. You must have heard about the video call that Ericsson did uh, in their, un in their uh, Canadian lab. Then there was a video call between Telstra and an operator in Switzerland that also happened in the latter part of 2019. And then recently, Optus had a, a video call using 5G and spectrum sharing while there was an LTE module running LTE data from the same radio resource. So the design principles are mainly that the users should be transparent to each other. So 5G users and LTE users, they don't know they have, a near, they have a neighboring LTE user right next to them or some meters apart in the cell. Secondly, LTE performance should not be compromised. Basically, all the LTE user throughput and their performance should not be compromised in terms of this coexistence. And thirdly, there is the collision part. So 5G uh, resource elements when being transmitted to 5G resources, they should not be colliding with the LTE signal. So now let's uh, look at uh, the 3GPP specification part and then we will move on to the implementation and the vendor solutions. So talking about 3GPP specifications, there is an interesting thing about dynamic spectrum sharing. There is no one concrete specification that you can point out that this is the specification which deals with spectrum sharings. There is a number of uh, uh, earlier specifications new specifications that give you, uh, you can say, a direction that you can use to implement dynamic spectrum sharing in your network. Number one, uh, basically we already used uh, updated procedures for PDCCH for cross-carrier scheduling that is already being implemented and some part of it is also used in dynamic spectrum sharing. Then we have a very important thing called a CRS uh, matching. So LTE cell round uh, reference signal rate matching that is one of the very important specification in 3gpp which is a cornerstone for dynamic spectrum sharing basically what happens is that uh, a, a 5g nr ue will basically set up uh, listen to the frames being sent from e node b on those frames where there is no lte signaling being transmitted so the ue will be capable to know where and when the LTE reference signals are being transmitted and therefore the 5G NR uh, signals will be adjusted to that and the UE will listen on those particular instances. Secondly, uh, what we use is that we use uh, the multicast broad broadband single frequency network subframes to transmit the control and the physical control channels for 5G NR to the users. So basically these subframes are empty uh, in terms of an LT network and we use those times those time slots to transfer 5G uh, and our physical and control information to the 5G users and hence causing no collision with the LT. In the release 16 part we are also considering uh, physical downlink shared channels uh, format with length 9 and 10 which will basically give us new uh, room for our uh, PDCCH design. So there are things happening in release 16 as well, which will give more, uh, you can say, impetus to dynamic spectrum sharing implementation. Now, let's see what uh, the vendors have implemented. So in terms of vendor, Ericsson seems to be uh, far ahead in terms of the vendors in dynamic spectrum sharing. Ericsson uh, conducted a lab uh, test for 
uh, dynamic spectrum sharing in 2019 in Canada. Then uh, they collaborated with Telstra and a Swiss operator and made another 5G call along with using dynamic spectrum sharing to use LT. And then recently in Australia, and they did a trial with Optus. And it is to be considered that the 5G in our UE needs to be capable for that CRS uh, rate matching. And in two of these trials, uh, a specific Oppo uh, non-commercial handset was used that was capable for using this CRS uh, matching thing. So in, uh, in summary, we can say that uh, dynamic spectrum sharing uh, will play a key part. Uh, oh, coming back to the vendors, Nokia has also announced uh, that it will be providing a solution for dynamic spectrum sharing in 2020, uh, as we re read the release from there uh, from the website. So uh, 2020 might be the year of dynamic spectrum sharing, and it will pro most probably play a key role in the initial 5G deployments across the world. In a nutshell, uh, dynamic spectrum sharing is you can say an open technology where the specifications are not that concrete. So the implementation from the vendors will play a key role and there it will probably uh, a market edge that they would have uh, in the future 5G deployments. And in terms of optimization, in terms of planning, design, the vendor specific uh, solution will play a key role. So I hope that uh, this introduction, this overview for dynamic spectrum sharing will help you. And just to uh, let you know that we will be sharing our uh, videos on 5G uh, specifications uh, very soon. So stay tuned and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.